Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, here to show you the basic concept behind a pretty old idea. It's called a slinky dipole. And the slinky, uh, the word slinky, does not refer to the nature of the dipole, but rather to what it's made out of. Uh, remember those things called slinkies? I believe they were invented in 1945 by some physicist who noticed their peculiar way of walking downstairs uh, and doing other strange things. They're, they're basically a coil of rigid or rather hard metal so that they make a spring a couple of inches three inches in diameter and they can be stretched out to a length L of about um, I think 15 feet before they become permanently deformed but their main the main trick is just the the way that they behave they, they were great fun for little kids to play with and being made out of metal, they also proved to be quite a lot of fun for ham radio operators to play with. Uh, I am not drawing a, a complete diagram here that shows the construction of a slinky dipole, but rather the theory of operation. The two sides should be stretched to equal lengths, um, up to about 15 feet, I believe. Uh, and because these slinkies form wire coils, this is a very efficient um, and theoretically almost ideal way to shrink the physical size of a dipole for a given resonant frequency. Now, I'm not sure what the resonant frequency of a dipole made out of two slinkies stretched up to their full uh, non-deformational causing length would be, but I think it's in the order, I read somewhere it's on the order of 10 megahertz. I recommend you do a Google search on the phrase, or yeah, on the phrase, slinky dipole, or maybe you could search for, uh, in the box, for all of the words, slinky dipole, and you'll get a whole bunch of articles about antennas made out of these venerable old uh, toys. I don't know where you will find a slinky these days. I think you can get them on places like eBay. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there, there are outlets that have just about everything uh, that you could possibly imagine. But the important thing about this antenna is that you not rely on it as a resonant antenna and that you not feed it with coaxial cable and that you not attempt to use a ballon at the feed point to convert an unbalanced feed line to the balanced load that two equally stretched slinkies will present. You need, in the ideal case, to feed it with ladder line, low loss ladder line, open wire feed line, and have a transmatch right at your station. As for supporting this antenna, the most usual method is to take a, a an insulating uh, rope of some kind and if it's going to be an outdoor antenna you would want it to be water resistant like nylon rope and you run it along through the top well it's naturally going to end up at the top of these slinkies and you stretch it as tight as you can between two supports and then you stretch the slinkies out to equal lengths and secure them in some way or another to that rope so that they will stay at their assigned lengths. So you'll need to solder these connections between the ladder line and the slinkies. But that's getting into the practical matter. The theoretical matter is that it, it uniformly distributes the loading, uh, the inductive loading of this antenna, which is the best possible way to shorten a dipole antenna and for that reason if you can somehow manage to get open wire down through the ceiling in your house or the floor of your attic 
into your house uh, without getting too close to electrical wiring or other things that will unbalance this ladder line. If you and y you know you're a radio ham, aren't you? You can find a way to do that if you want to get on the air. Yeah, an attic dipole antenna shrunk down to as short as 30 feet overall, 15 feet on each side, and a good transmatch. You can pretty much use this thing on all bands, and as I've alluded to in other videos or at least in one other video about my force feeding my vertical with my coaxial cable, you can almost always make contacts if you're willing to get on the air and try. Uh, it's not going to be a highly efficient antenna, but if you need to have a shrunken down antenna, it's a really great, great way to get that. And you can also capacitively load the ends of the, these slinkies with um, additional wires if you have the room uh, maybe capacitance hats like you'd find at the top of a capacitive uh, hat loaded vertical you just do that on either end in your attic you know nobody's going to be up there uh, looking at you uh, looking at the the antenna and admiring how horrible it looks uh, or how weird or cool or whatever it may look uh, they're just the only thing that's going to interest you as a radio ham is how well you can get out and uh, if you're in compromised circumstances where your attic is not uh, you don't have a metal roof you have wood mostly around your uh, attic antenna this is a pretty good way to go about having an all band attic antenna two cautionary notes one you're going to get a lot of RF interference from appliances in your house because after all this is inside your house and it's going to be near electrical wiring you can't get away from that and number two your signal your output signal is going to cause almost certainly going to cause interference to various home appliances unless you are willing to run QRP or at least low power under 10 or 15 watts but that just makes it a challenge to work rare exotic DX with an antenna like this and only 15 watts on say 20 meters or or the magic band 10 meters or even if you really want to get a challenge you could try and tune this thing up on 160 meters if you've got a good transmatch like uh, one of the PAL star transmatches uh, you can probably do that Another another caveat regarding the transmatch for any antenna that's tuned with balanced feed line like this, it should be a transmatch that has a truly balanced output. And again, um, a little free advertising here, a company known as Palstar, P-A-L-S-T-A-R, does make a transmatch that has a good old-fashioned, honest-to-goodness, balanced output. The old Viking um, transmatches, what did they call the matchboxes? The matchbox uh, antennas uh, on the bands that they would tune did have truly balanced outputs. But a lot of transmatches have ballon coils at the output, and they attempt to get a a balanced output by using a ballon with a high SWR that is a no-no um, in W1GV's uh, Bible of technical uh, misinformation <laughs> or information as you may prefer I uh, am convinced that operating a ballon with a high standing wave ratio um, anything other than its actual intended input and output imp impedances and no reactants operating a ballon in any way other than the ideal uh, will result in very uh, a, a very lot of power getting wasted as heat in the core of that ballon and you don't want that you want it to waste as little as power as possible when you have only a small amount of power to begin with and your antenna situation is compromised but this is the old concept the slinky dipole almost as old as the slinky 
itself. Stangibilisco, signing off. Amateur radio station W1GV saying 73, which means best regards. And so long, which, on a slinky dipole or any other type of antenna, in my native fist always translates to da 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 da.